Hello, hello. Welcome back. It's been a little bit since I've done a video uh, with you guys. So um, today I've got kind of a different video. Uh, in addition to my robotics job, I also teach at a local community college um, that I actually started off my college career at, which is awesome. The uh, class is Intro to Python, but I had a former student that wanted to know, okay, I've moved on. I want to do, I'm doing a C++ class. And specifically, I'm running Windows, which I run Linux. Uh, that's my recommendation for if you're going to be doing programming is to run a Linux-based operating system. Um, but this individual also wants to do some game design and other things, so I'm sure that's why they're using uh, Windows. And they asked, hey, my professor um, gave me some instructions, but I could use a little extra help, so I thought I'd just make a video for it, hopefully something really quick. And uh, yeah, so let's get going. So first thing you want to do is specifically uh, the goal of this video is to get Visual Studio Code working with just C++ instead of doing the full like Visual, Visual Studio package, the purple one, uh, which is just for Windows. Uh, Visual Studio Code, however, is for um, just about any operating system. You got uh, the Mac OS, Linux, and Windows, and then I believe you can even get it running on some of the embedded Linux, which is pretty cool. So the first thing you want to do is download Visual Studio Code. So I've already done that, but if you haven't yet, you would just go to Visual Studio Code, specifically look up visual, the code aspect of Visual Studio. So if you just look up Visual Studio, you're going to get the Windows version, which is this purple guy. And that's going to install, uh, basically it's super useful if you want to do like C Sharp, C++, and a bunch of other programming languages and have it all specifically dedicated to Windows. But the point of this video is to get it just working with the IDE. So right here, we got Visual Studio Code. I'm just going to go to download. It's going to show your specific option. I already have it downloaded, so I'm not gonna click on this. But essentially, once you run through this, just do all the default selections and make sure you have it added to path, which should be already selected as one of the options. And then from there, you should have the option to just open up code. If you type in code, you can see Visual Studio Code right there. Open it up. Why it's all the way over there. There we go. Cool. And here we see a little welcome screen. So this is pretty much a fresh install. Uh, I literally installed it, I think, 10 minutes ago, and we're just gonna roll with this. So once you have that, the next question is, okay, how do I get uh, C++ compilers? So C++ specifically, unlike, say, Python, is a compiled language. A compiled language requires an extra piece of little software that you feed your code into to get something that's actually executable. So in Python, I would write a file and I would hit run and it could just, it runs the interpreter and it would just execute. In C++, we need to use one of numerous compilers. Uh, usually it's gonna be something like GCC and you're going to actually have to add that to your system separately from what we've just done with VS Code. And specifically with Windows, it actually gets a little tricky. So if you just go and Google C++ Visual Studio Code. So let's go right here. I'll just Google it real quick. Visual Studio Code and then Windows. You're going to see this link right here. So C++ Program and Visual Studio Code. And that's essentially this one right here. So the very first thing it's telling us to do is install an extension. An extension in Visual Studio Code is just an added piece of software that is meant to enhance your developer experience. So if we go to Visual Studio Code, Right here is going to be my extensions block. I'm going to go ahead and type in C++. And right here I see it from Microsoft. So I'm going to install that. It's installing. I'm also going to install this extension pack in general, which does uh, some additional other things. It kind of wraps it all together in one. It'll give you some CMake tools, which we're not going to cover in this uh, tutorial but is very useful. And in my general just day-to-day -day experience on my Linux system, it's also what I've installed. Cool, so once this is installed, I can just go back, exit that. We're done with this for now, for one second. But then it's gonna say, okay, I need to install a compiler. So if we just look at here, it's saying, hey, there's a bunch of different compilers you could use. And essentially it's saying that if you're on Linux or Mac, you're good, it should be pre-installed. However, if you're on Windows, it's gonna be a little more complicated. But the first thing you wanna do is make sure you don't already have it installed. So we're gonna look for uh, G++ along with, eventually we're gonna look for the GCC. So it's saying, hey, go to Visual Studio Code, and if you don't know this already, you can actually open up a native terminal inside of Visual Studio Code uh, just from here. So if I go to Terminal, New Terminal, I've got a new terminal open, I'm on Windows, so right now it's PowerShell. If I write GCC dash dash version, I get the term GCC is not recognized. This means I don't have it installed. 
I don't have a compiler installed for C++. So I can write C++ code right now, but I have no way of actually executing it. So what I want to do is I want to go up here and I've got these little instructions right here. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to follow this link right here to install the 64 MinGW. So MinGW is basically just this miniaturized version for the uh, C++ compilers for Windows. So what MinGW is, is basically just a lightweight version of the C++ compiling utilities that the full Visual Studio package has. So all we need to do to install these is we're going to go to their website. So I'm going to click on this link, we're going to go here, we're going to click right here to install the executable. So I've done this a couple times, so we're going to go ahead and let it download, click on this, and hit run. Alright, so it's going to say setup, so I'm going to go next step. So this is very important, leave this as default, this is saying where it's going to be installed. So right here it's just the C directory and then my sys 64. Hit next, don't change any of this, it's good as default and it's going to unpack all the components. It's going to get some of the basic stuff for the C++ compiling to work. So we'll just sit here for this real quick. Awesome, so it's done installing and now we actually need to run it. So what this does right now, what we installed is MySys2. That's basically just going to open like a, a shell, a terminal for us to actually install the things we really need. So if we hit finish, it should pop up with a shell right here. And to me, honestly, this looks a lot like a Linux shell. So the next step we need to do is actually install the uh, GCC package that they recommend right here. So we're going to run through this and we're also going to, have to install a tool chain um, that we're going to see in the, uh, in the next step. But for one, let's just go ahead and copy that, open this guy back up. Hit paste and fix the fact that my pasting came with a bunch of weird symbols. Boom, there we go. Hit enter. So it's gonna ask, do you wanna proceed? Just hit Y and enter and let that run for a second. Awesome, so it's done. Now, there is one additional step though before this will actually work with VS Visual Studio Code. Uh, if you go back over to the instructions here that we clicked on, what you can see is, okay, after you've installed that, we also need to install the mingww64 toolchain. So go ahead and just copy this command right here. Copy. So this is gonna give us uh, GDB, which is a debugger. But also importantly, for whatever reason on my Visual Studio Code, even after having it added to the path, which is our next step, I couldn't actually get Visual Studio Code to find GCC. But after I ran this step, it worked. So I'm not gonna dig too far into it other than just gonna run it because we need it anyways for GDB. Hit enter. So this is saying, do you wanna install all of these pieces and utilities? I just hit enter because the default will be all. There's no reason not to. And then you gotta hit Y and enter again once you're prompted with the, do you want to proceed with installation? Ah, there we go. All right, so that's all done. Took about like two to three minutes. At this point, we can actually go ahead and close this and we should be good. So the next step we have to do is actually tell um, Windows, specifically Visual Studio Code, where we just installed this compiler because right now it's installed on the system. It should be good to go, but we still don't have any reference to it in Visual Studio Code. And the way you do that is with the path variable. So right here, it explains exactly what we need to do assuming you did all the default uh, paths in the installation, which we just did. So right here, we're just gonna go here and we're gonna type environment. It says edit the system environment variables right there. We're gonna click enter on that. And then right here, there's this environment variable section. So this is important, follow along and be careful. You can mess up your system a little bit if you do this wrong, just cause you're editing the path. It's fixable, but. So we're gonna go to path and then we're gonna hit edit. So you already see it right here actually. If I click on that and then go here, 
what you do is you hit new, and then what you want to do is add this path right here, this C my sys 64 min gw 64 bin. So I've already added that, so I'm going to cancel that. And now you should be able to have Visual Studio Code find your GCC compiler. Hit OK. Hit OK. Now how did I know where that was? Well, for one, it was in the install. Two, you can follow along right here because it says it's the default. But you also, if you were to go to your files, you were going to local disk, you can see my sys 64 I can go to 64, min gw64, and I can see bin. And I'm gonna find that file path right here. So that's how I know that that's the correct spot. Once you've hit okay, your path should be set. Now if you already have Visual Studio open, go ahead and restart it so that it can actually find, um, reload its path. So I'll just type in code again, open that up. Cool, so now if I go to terminal, which is open right here, give it a sec to figure its stuff out. I can clear this whole thing, just delete it. We'll go to terminal, new terminal. If I do GCC dash dash version, boom, I have GCC. So I'm ready to start compiling. So if I close this, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go here, I'm gonna say file, let's do new file. I'll call this uh, hello world.cpp, classic. It's gonna say, where do you wanna save it? I'll save it to my desktop, that works, cool. So you can tell Visual Studio has that extension running because I can see C++ in the top. What this is gonna give me, this should give me some level of IntelliSense and that should actually be what basically auto-completes and lets me, um, helps identify errors that I make. So first thing we're gonna do is do, just write our main function, see so you get color coordinating and everything already. I'm gonna say, okay, stood, see out, hello all. The end line. The classic uh, hello world program that just prints out hello world or hello all. So now that it, because I have this extension installed, these Microsoft extensions, I have a really important button that got added. It's right up here. This is the same one that uh, like in my class in Python, I'd show students, hey, you can run and debug your program right in Visual Studio Code. Well, you can do it right here too. So if I go here, and I say run. It's gonna ask which of the MinGWs I want to use to build, or MinGW like uh, package pieces I want to actually compile with. So right here, just select the C, or the G++ one. It should be the first one that asks. Hit that. It says, uh oh, hey, I got an error. It's gonna say something with the JSON launch file when you first run it and it errors out. You can ignore that, just close that. But, so right here it's saying, hey, I've got an error. One of the cool things about the C++ extension is it actually knows quite a bit about one of the common errors and where you might be making mistakes. And right here, it's straight up telling me, hey, you forgot to include uh, your, it says O stream, but I'm gonna include my IO stream. Basically, it's telling me I forgot to include. So if I do include, ta-da. So what happened here? I included IO stream, my errors went away because it found stood C out all of a sudden. Now it's gonna default me to this debug console. I don't really want that. I wanna go to terminal and boom, hello all. It printed right to the console. So if I change this to hello world, save it again and hit run, default to there. You can set that as a default one so it doesn't constantly keep asking you. But boom, right there, hello world. So I'm gonna actually go ahead and delete all these shells because I don't care about them right now. There's another thing I wanna show you too. If I were to do, let's say there's that, and then I'm gonna do another line. I'm gonna say hello person. If I save that, but if I hit this little red, if I hover over here, I see this little red dot. If I put it right there, or actually let's put it on line five, that's a breakpoint. So all of a sudden, I can actually debug with this right now. So if I hit debug C++ file, hit the same executable I was hitting before, all of a sudden, I should get pulled into my debug terminal right there, boom. It says what line I stopped on. You can see, hey, it just ran hello world. You can see, okay, what are my local variables? I've got nothing because I have no variables in here, but I can see what like the registers are and what all that stuff is. That's for a little more in depth if you get into that class. But I can see the call stack. I can see all the 
basically the functions and the internal calls this thing made to get to this step. But here's how you actually use this as just a high level. I can see that up to line four is ran. So I see hello world ran right here. That's awesome. But now if I want to run the next line, all I have to do is hit step over. And all of a sudden if I hit that, boom, hello person executed right there. So this is a really, really great tool for debugging code and making sure that your code's executing the way you want it to. If you aren't using the debugger and you aren't stepping line by line when you're stuck, you're only hurting yourself. This is the best advice I can give anyone learning C++ or any language. I show students this in Python pretty much within the first couple weeks because it's so important. But if I'm done, I can go ahead and stop and it's gonna exit the program. And just like that, I've got C++ working. Now, there's a lot of extra steps and things you can do um, beyond this to get a better C++ dev environment, stuff that I personally have set up for my Linux environment. Uh, one of the most important ones I do is an automatic formatter. Uh, I install Clang Format and uh, can do a little quick short video on that again later, but that helps me so that if I have something like where I maybe put my curly brace up there, I hate that style. I can set it to where on auto save or if I hit control shift I to auto format, it'll automatically bring it down here. So I do that with something called Clang Format. Um, we install that later. And the other thing is that obviously what I've shown here is pretty much limited to a single C++ file. And the way this is getting built is kind of abstracting away a lot of additional stuff that you may need to know in the future. So I highly encourage you to uh, kind of look at some other videos on YouTube. There's a whole bunch on CMake. So in my professional life and uh, what I do with the code I write for my company, they all require that we do it with CMake. So CMake is basically this uh, wrapper around make, which is what lets you compile multiple C++ files together into a single executable. So it's pretty rare and it's only very simple programs that are going to have a single CPP file or a single header file. Usually you've got multiple of both and you want to combine all those into a single executable. Uh, to do that, you need something beyond the feature set of what I've shown here. But just to get C++ running and compiling on your computer, this should be a starting point. Um, if there's additional interest in some more of those advanced features, I can put up a video on CMake and on Clang. Um, I'd probably do those in Linux because that's my personal dev environment, but it should translate over to Windows just fine. Awesome. I hope this was helpful and I hope uh, any students that are just getting started with C++ or trying to figure out how to navigate this Windows ecosystem with the actual C++ and I've done Python before doing all these things, hopefully this helps. Um, consolidate information into a very short video just to get you rolling. By no means a full tutorial, but something just to get you rolling with uh, your stuff. So. so yeah, if this video was helpful, please like and subscribe per usual. You know, the whole boilerplate, gotta ask that for the algorithm. And yeah, uh, well, I'll see y'all in the next video. Thank you. Bye.